Game on and welcome to something I'm going to do as an experiment because we've just come off an epic long recording with a wonderful chap called Mike, who you will have no doubt heard on the crazy train by now. So I'm going to do something a little bit different. So I have with me, well, first of all, I'm your host, Rob Wade, and uh, welcome to the E14 Gamecast. And joining me is my pet rock via satellite, via co-op uh, remote play, Blake Harmer. Maybe about games. <laughs> is that your you just in an outro um no what we're going to do is a new concept that i had called speed runs okay and what we're going to do is i'm going to start a timer for 15 minutes once we've gotten through the small talk right and then we're going to talk about the games we're gaming and it will not exceed 15 minutes okay and it doesn't matter how much if we're halfway through a conversation it doesn't fucking matter 15 minutes. It's <laughs> going to be the, the music. <laughs> quite the I was considering just <laughs> doing like, I was considering just doing a thing where it's like, what games are you, like, what games are you gaming? Make it quick. I'm playing this. Are you enjoying it? Yes. Credits. <laughs> <laughs> Bibbidi Bop games. Uh, yeah. I, I, I'm happy to give it a go. I'm not sure if any of my games have changed since the last time I've recorded, but um, I'll have a go. All right, cool. So, start the clock. What games again? <laughs> okay, on the, okay <laughs> on the Switch, I am still playing a bit of uh, Super Smash Brothers Ultimate, trying to unlock some extra characters, that sort of thing, working my way through like the uh, spirits mode. But it's enjoyable. Um, <laughs> next game, uh, <laughs> seventeen seconds. You can stretch it out a little bit more oh, okay. if you want. It's fine. Yeah, um, it's yeah. I've been enjoying it from the. Uh, it's it's a fairly generic story mode for a fighting game, but then again, mm-hmm. it's what you'd expect from a fighting game, really. I suppose. Uh, yeah, I think I think you normally get treated with games like Injustice or Mortal Kombat, and when and when you do play another fighting game, you go, "Oh, this is fucking generic," and then yeah. you go, "Oh yeah, that's actually the norm there." Yeah, um, exactly. Yeah. Uh, I've been playing another smaller, like sort of. It's like a sort of platform and shoot 'em up game called Butcher. Oh, okay. And um, it's basically like a sort of like a platform shoot 'em up, like twin stick shooter type thing, but more mm-hmm. like a yeah, it, but more like a Metroidvania style look, I guess. Okay. Um, sort of platformer. It's on um, Switch. Yeah, yeah, it's on the Switch. Okay. I picked it up like dirt cheap when it had the January sale because I think it was only like two pound eighty okay. or something. Um, apparently, it's not very long. I haven't. I'm only played it a little bit, so I probably I, for all I know, I could be halfway through it and wouldn't even know. But um, <laughs> It, it it sort of it, it reminds me of um old like Doom and stuff like that because it's very gory and ultra violent but it's yeah. very, like they sort of kill everyone in the room very very quickly and you could easily get killed that sort of thing. It does really and it's very well. very twitch very twitch shooter even though it's mm. a platformer. Okay. Yeah, I think it did. I think there, there were there was a period it like last year at some point i can't remember when it was uh where there were like two games came out very very close together and they were both harking back to like old style shoot 'em ups that but they weren't actually first person shooters they were like these things and butcher was one of them okay so um yeah i can't remember the name of the other one though off the top of my head fair enough um however main game wise i've been um playing uh assassin's creed odyssey oh nice so um i'm a god it's a long game it's Spartans, right? Yeah, yeah. It's uh, ancient it's, uh, it's ancient Greece. It's um, actually set before Assassin's Creed Origins, so it's not actually made any reference to obviously the Assassins or the Templars. Mm-hmm. Um, but it seems to weirdly have a. Uh, it, it's, it, it seems to be they're looking for some specific artifact from this time period and from this history that is something that, that the Assassins could use as a weapon against the Templars. So it still has a slight modern day link but as a as a thankful thing to most people the modern day bit is hardly in it mm. <laughs> it's okay. mostly focused that you may i think i've only i've played it god knows how many hours um and i think i've only come out of the animus once yeah okay. so that so yeah that, that's an inkling of how how little the uh, main plot effect is affecting the game at the moment yeah that's my sort of ideal assassin's creed is the ones that spend as little time as possible in the present day and as much time as possible in the day you're trying to kill shit in yeah 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 and that's but, kind of how i see it as like um, a good time but otherwise it plays very similarly to origins the only thing i would say that's a bit different it's a i don't know it's, it's been a while since i played origins but it just feels like it takes bloody forever to kill anyone because 
everyone's got like these health bars and levels and that and and you get some people if they're a bit of a higher level than you or a higher rank you can't even kill them with an assassin attack so you sort of just oh, take wow. a large you sort of just take a large chunk of life off oh so you do damage but just not oh enough. yeah yeah but yeah. you'll you, you won't kill them so i thought well if it's just going to raise the alarm and <laughs> anyway i might as yeah. well just stab you go you nuts know? yeah yeah so it, it feel like the evidence is more in combat but i feel like it's a little bit drawn out but mm. as i say i'm still persevering with it though so i'll give okay. it a full definitive review when i get nearer the end nice um do you get a sense uh, of how far you are from the end uh not story wise i mean i know well my friend who lent it to me, um, he got he ended the game at about level seventy, and I'm okay. about level thirty. So theoretically, I'm about just under halfway. I'd have thought. But yeah, then again, he fair. did a lot of that. He did a lot of the side stuff. But he said he put about 150 hours into this damn game. Fuck! It is. It's like apparently it's like Skyrim big. They weren't kidding about Odysseys, were they? <laughs> no, and that's the thing. It's well, I mean, he said he finished. He, he did finish the main plot a good few weeks before he said right i've finished it now mm. so i'm hoping it's because there's a lot of side guns rather than because the main plot's very yeah. long we are happy to announce our new assassin's creed game assassin's creed fucking hours of it <laughs> <laughs> yeah and i think that's the thing i'm I'm a bit worried i'm gonna get to a point where i'm gonna be like you know what i'm happy i've, I've had my fill you know because mm. I, I i even looked and one of my friends and my friend's list has got the platinum for it and i was sitting there going a better hour than i would put into it going Fuck that noise. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. <laughs> I've yeah. got about 20 games in my pile that I've not played. <laughs> yeah. Welcome right. to Assassin's Creed Verbose Pirates, the next game, which is actually just Black Flag, except they talk for fucking ages about what they're about to, <laughs> what they're about to shank up. Yeah. Oh, God. But yeah, I, 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 I'm, that, that side I am still enjoying. It, but... Yeah, good. Well, so it's, it's kept itself relatively fresh then. Yeah, yeah. Other than... As much as Assassin's Creed does. Yeah, I think that's the thing. I'm a bit worried uh, because I've luckily the story missions have been, even though I suppose I've been doing the same thing. There's like nice little things you can sidetrack, like there's a cult you need to hunt down. So you're sort of gathering the clues to then find them and then going over to the world to then assassinate them is, is relatively fun yeah. in a tip in a typical Ubisoft sandboxy type way. Mm-hmm. Um, it's uh, got yeah. My my worry is that. It's all well and good for the time I've been playing it so far, but am I still going to be very happy with 150 hours of it? Mm. So the only thing that's keeping me is I know that there are like mythical creatures you can fight later on when you get to higher levels. Like right. you can take on Cyclops or Medusa and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And I'm hoping that they're going to be pretty good boss battles. But otherwise, I'm, my worry is, yeah, I'm worried it's, it, it would have gone like, nope, but we've played our hand too early. In this yeah, yeah. Now. We've, we've blown our load too soon. And uh, I'm afraid mm. it's all downhill from here. You're just fighting blokes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And that's my worry. But Or oh, women. Well, yeah, yeah. That's the thing. Yes, you can play as two different characters. You can play as male yes. or female. You know? Yes, uh, I've heard this. That's the one. And that's uh, cool, isn't it? even though it's the same plot, the pa- <laughs> they basically. Um, all right. Yeah. So, yeah, it, it, it's still, yeah. Interesting. Um, yeah, but that would be my main ones. I I have dabbled a bit with um, uh, board game wise. I uh, obviously me and you have played a bit of Nemesis recently. We did. I'd forgotten all about that. That was a fun game. Hmm. I was just sitting there I've, thinking. I haven't played. I can't talk about any tabletop stuff. I was like, I know we're on a timer, but that would that probably work in my favour. But yeah, we did play Nemesis, and that was a ton of fun. Hmm. I've been enjoying that, and uh, what did I play the other day? Oh, I've been playing Terminator Salvation with Brad. Well. Oh yeah, nice. Uh, so, yeah, actually, see, yeah. I mean, we got the uh, starter sets for those pretty cheap. A couple of us. Yeah, yeah. It's a, it's um, it, it, it's it's quick and easy game. Problem is, some of the dice rolling you have to roll very quite high numbers. So I feel right. like, uh, like I, I play. I played with it was me and my dad playing against each other with Brad sort of helping us helping dad through the rules. Yeah, because I'd played it before. And I think it was just a day where obviously everything was cursed. So it was just like lots and lots of bullets flying everywhere, but no actual, no one actually dying. Yeah. So it's basically like Bond villains in a fight to the death. And it's like nobody's going to actually hit anything because nobody's got a pistol. Yeah. And it was just a bit, yeah, depressing as a result. But um, yeah, but other times I've played it I've not had that problem so I don't feel, yeah. I don't know if it was just a bad day that was. yeah it could be I mean sometimes yeah. these things happen don't they some games you just roll duds and then mm. uh, that's that's your that's your lot for the whole night it's called when I play hero clicks most commonly <laughs> yes. 
Um, so what have you been going? So I finished Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu, the okay. story mode. So I beat the Elite Four and went through the last bit. And now I'm working on my Pokedex. I have 142 out of 150. So I'm very close to getting it. You're doing it. well then. I'm missing, um, I'm missing Alakazam, who is, I think you have to trade him. Hmm. Uh, you have to trade an, a Kadabra for him to evolve, uh, which is a pisser because I don't have any Pokemon Let's Go playing friends that I know of, or at least if I do, they're not playing Pokemon Let's Go right now. So obviously I can't just go, can you quickly send me one of these? Um, so him, uh, Vulpix, and Ninetales, Biological Extension, which I found out yesterday after looking for him for fucking ages, literally just one of them is exclusive to the Eevee version. So I think, oh, right, because I swear I saw them wearing around like walking around the start area. But yeah, more I think about it, the bit of footage I was watching was with them playing the EV version. Yeah, but also if you've got, I, th- I think, I'm not sure, but I think once you've caught one in the game, they start turning up. Because once I caught, a, once I had a Dragonite, I started seeing them just in the wild, which I hadn't before. <laughs> so I think, um, yeah, I think that's kind of a, a factor. So I'm missing Alakazam, Vulpix, and Nine Tails. Clefable because I'm I've only had one Moonstone. I used it on Jigglypuff, hmm. and then four more who escaped me right now. I've got all the legendary birds. I've got Mewtwo. Um, I've got the ones annoyingly the ones that are in Pokemon the geographical exclusives in Pokemon Go are in the game, but you can't hmm. transfer them back because otherwise I could complete my Pokedex in Pokemon Go as well, which is a pisser. Uh, and <laughs> Goldine and Seeking. That's another two. Oh, okay. I think there's one random one that eludes me, but I can't remember what it is. Is Mewtwo still in like the hidden cave thing? Yes. Like the original? Yeah, there's, a, yeah. there's a hidden, there's a hidden cave. Once you finish the game, you can go back to it and uh, go in and fight Mewtwo. And it, it fucking nails, understandably. It's like the highest mm-hmm. level Pokemon you face. At that Do you point. still need like the master ball to take him? Or? Yes. But I was, and I was worried because obviously you have the go mechanics and I was worried that what happens if I throw it and he just does that stu- one stupid animation that makes him uncatchable. And I'm you bastards. Mm. Is it like, if it just bounces against him, I might do a shit fit and just poop myself in anger. <laughs> yeah. That's the thing. I would have been a bit like, Oh God. Yeah. Yeah. That would have been a, that would have been a motherfucker. So yeah, I've been playing that. Um, I went through and did another year of Stardew Valley. So I finished year two. Uh, cause I tend to do one year of the game and then play something else. And then one year of Stardew, play something else. Cause otherwise I just keep playing Stardew forever. Cause it's really, it's really nice and tranquil and calming. Hmm. Uh, yeah, I've still never played it properly. It's, it's I've... good fun. Uh, if you played Harvest Moon, you played it. It's the same game. Um, hmm. Sorry, it is. <laughs> oh, I know. I've never really tried them. I mean, I think I've, I've, I did start off Stardew Valley and then I sort of, want, I basically, I started out the fan, cleared all the ground up, walked into town and talked to some people and then I was like, oh, I'll come back to that later and never yeah. did. Yeah. So, um, and then I've been, I started Death Road to Canada yesterday and that's quite fun. Oh, good. I'm glad I'm, you like it. Yeah, I'm enjoying that a lot. Um, I also bought, I haven't had a chance to play it yet, but I, they had a sale on Mutant League Football, Dynasty Edition, so I bought that. Oh, Okay, yeah, I did see that. I thought it was on sale. Yeah. So. Uh, so I bought that because I had some spare, I had some spare change in my uh, eShop wallet. So I made use of that and s- topped it up with a few quid to get it. Yeah. Uh, Is it definitely like the original, like Mutant League? Yeah, apparently it's like a, a spiritual successor rather than a oh, fresh new yeah. game. It's like a reboot almost. A bit like that Road Redemption's basically Road Rash and stuff like that. Yeah, I think so. That sort of thing. Mm. Um, otherwise, I've still not played anything on ps4 since i started gta uh, 5 i'm still playing i haven't really delved into it much recently but that's the most recent game i played on ps4 uh, on xbox i tried giving cuphead another go and fuck that noise i got a little bit further but it still nails um and i'm still not getting gut enough maybe we should do a co-op or something one day maybe maybe that's the solution um and then, i have at least beaten it <laughs> yeah well uh, speaking of games that you know one's beaten and the other one doesn't believe um i've been back into ftl because it's a nice fun little game that i can play at lunchtime at work still don't believe you i've done it i definitely have <laughs> but if you, it, it depends if i show you on the macbook it doesn't work because the save game is not there but if i go on the pc I don't know why this is, but I guess they're treated as two separate games, even though they're the same game. Mm. But um, on my Mac, I don't have the the ship that you get for beating the game. But on the PC, I've got it, and it's got I've got the achievement for it. So ah, okay. <laughs> um, so yeah, I've been playing FTL, and at home, I've been playing RimWorld because who doesn't love a bit of RimWorld? Oh, I did play a little bit of Mech Warrior. Oh, uh, nice. Sorry, Battletech. Battletech. How, sorry. How is it? 
Um, I, as I say, I only did like the tutorial in the first mission. I haven't. Okay. It's not been a game I've been jumping into every time. But okay. no, I like it. It, it plays. It does have a lot of the mechanics of the board game in. Mm -hmm. so, uh, so it does have. Uh, like obviously you have got to monitor heat and stuff like that. Like yeah. you know, if you do, um, uh, it does take into account like if you do like a run to a specific position, you might not be able to fire, but mm -hmm. it does make you harder to hit. So you get okay. yourself that, and because of the speed you traveled, it makes it harder a bit like in the in the war game. So okay, nice. A, so there's there's practical effects to doing different things. Yeah, and it nice. does have a campaign. You do have a character creation at the beginning, and it does use some of the stats like they use for the Mech Warrior stats in the board game. So nice. it seems to be fairly faithful to to it. I mean, obviously not playing the war game as much as I probably should, you know, and if Brad's listening to this, I'm sure he agrees. Um, but, uh, yeah, what I've seen of it so far, I've been enjoying. Um, the only thing that's put me off a little bit, and I'm not sure if it's just because my PC's on, on the way out, is the loading screen. The loading times are quite painful. But... Right, fair enough. Oh, uh, the next game I've bought to play, by the way, is Starlink Battle for Atlas, because I took the punt on the starter sex. It's 20 quid. It's ridiculous. Too, oh, okay. too cheap to pass up. Uh, Did you get the Switch first? Yeah, 20 seconds. Anything else you want to add? Um, no. Did you next, get Star Fox game. with the start then? Yes, I did. Um, okay. And that's one of the reasons I got it. Um, okay, awesome. Know, next game you're going to play? Um, next game I'm going to play, um, I've got Kingdom Come Deliverance in my pile, so I would quite like to get that, but I'd like to finish Assassin's nice. Creed first. So. Nice. Nice. And you ended that nicely on the timer. So there you go. Um, there you go. Listeners, if you enjoyed this little delve into the what games you're gaming at speed, um, you'll be pleased to know that normally we would go into more depth, but it is very, very late on recording night. And I thought it'd be nice to just get a game cast, talk a bit about what we're gaming. People can enjoy that. And, you know, our next episode will hopefully be a bit longer, but this is just one of those little things. It'd be nice to try out. Let us know if you liked it. Um, obviously, if you want to subscribe to the show for the longer form episodes, which range from anything from now 20 minutes to three, three and a half hours, um, we run the spectrum pretty heavily um, in every sense of the word and you can do so at all the good podcast providers and uh, all the all the shit ones too so we're on uh, Spotify Apple Podcasts YouTube Spreaker uh, Libsyn Podbean we're everywhere you can't miss us um, you seem to be good at giving it a good go but you can't miss us well, you can't miss us Blake social media where can people find you? Uh, on social media you can find me on Instagram at Harm of the Appreciator on Facebook where you can find me and also on Twitter at fucksake Blake. Yes, indeed. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Rob Wade Vision and Instagram as well. And I'm also the face behind the place at uh, Emotionally14 and Talk Star Wars on Twitter and Instagram. Emotionally14.com is where this wonderful stuff lives. Uh, podcasts, videos, uh, blog posts, everything for the permanently teenaged. Uh, am I missing something? Facebook group. Uh, Facebook group. Yeah, I've got Facebook Doing groups. Those. Yeah. Shit, posting, uh, shit posting with a theme, depending on where you go. Yeah. Crazy Train, E14 Gamecast, Talk Star Wars. That's part of us as well now. Yeah, Buy Robert's book on Amazon. There you go. Fuck it. That's all your thoughts on podcasting, on Kindle. Buy that. And have a good old cry. Because <laughs> <it is. laughs> there are no more worlds for me to conquer. <laughs> <laughs> right. Cool. Let us know if you enjoyed this episode. It's a fun little experiment. Just see if it works. Uh, I say, let us know. It's a speed run. This has been the E14 Gamecast, Bibbidi Bop Games. Hey, <laughs> what,